Hey there, the Games Apprentice back with another Evercade video, and this week I'm going to be looking at the Atari Lynx Collection 1. Does the Atari Lynx still hold up? Did it ever? And are these the games that best represent it? More importantly, is this any good? Let's find out. Songbird Productions founder, Carl Forum, was always an Atari fan in the making. He grew up with the Atari 2600 console and fondly remembered games of that era such as Asteroids and Pitfall. But in the early 1990s, time away at college and a new job meant he had all but left gaming behind. Then, with the growing popularity of the information superhighway and a little thing called the Usenet, he discovered a passionate set of Atari fans. A handful had even figured out how to hack then current Atari gaming systems, namely the Atari Lynx. Soon thereafter he received a homemade cable and custom cartridge that allowed him to download games to Lynx RAM, and he was hooked. In 1999 he published his very first independent Lynx and Jaguar games, and Songbird Productions was born. Atari is an interactive entertainment company. As an iconic brand that transcends generations and audiences, the company is globally recognised for its multi-platform interactive entertainment and licensed products. Atari owns and or manages a portfolio of more than 200 games and franchises, including world-renowned brands like Asteroids, Centipede, Missile Command, Pong and Rollercoaster Tycoon. Atari has offices in New York and Paris. 1989 was a big year. The world was changing and the portable gaming revolution was about to begin. Along with some of the more famous consoles, the Atari Lynx was introduced and unlike its competitors, it offered a full colour blacklit display with 16-bit graphics and a wider screen ratio than other systems. The Lynx was originally developed by gaming publisher Epix, first called The Handy. Epix approached Atari who had no handheld systems of their own to help the market and distribute the product. Atari finished the development and launched in 1989 with an emphasis on arcade conversions of hit games. As with many ambitious consoles at the time, features and prices did not mix too well. In the end, the Lynx faded because of a lack of third party support and not being budget friendly. The legacy of the Lynx remains a truly excellent group of games for this console which was ahead of its time. Now I never had an Atari Lynx growing up, I never even played one. I didn't actually have a handheld console until the Neo Geo Pocket came out. I wanted a Game Boy and I wanted a Game Gear, I don't remember ever actually wanting an Atari Lynx for whatever reason. Since then, I've got a ton of handhelds, I've got most of the mainstream ones but I've still not got an Atari Lynx. This collection consists of 17 games, none of which I've ever played before. Here they are ranked from worst to best. The main issue I personally had with this one were the controls. Honestly, I don't know why inverted controls ever existed. It just created some weird segregation of people that can't cope if up isn't down and down isn't up. I could at least try and get my brain around it if the horizontal controls were inverted as well, but my brain can't cope with things just being half in opposite land. Even without the difficulty of the controls though, anyone can see this is a bad game. It doesn't remotely feel like you're in a cockpit moving around space, it feels like you're moving a crosshair at blurry things and throwing lines at them. It looks awful, sounds awful and plays awful. It is the utter shit. Or for you people who play their games inverted and live in opposite land, it's amazing. Best game in the world. An okay looking action platformer where you play Red Ace, a man with a jetpack, and a transmat multi ordnance weapon. Whatever that is. You wander around a maze like level, encountering enemies and traps to the sound of silence and overly loud sound effects. Some music here would have been nice. The main problem though with the game is that even on the easiest difficulty, it's just insanely hard. The screen is incredibly zoomed in, as you can imagine it would be on such a small handheld console. You're often being shot by things off screen. Most things that are on screen take far too long to be destroyed and are way too overpowered. Avoiding enemies as much as possible seems like the best strategy, but sooner or later you're just going to get overwhelmed. Everything about this game is massively irritating. I never want to see it again. An FPS 
on the Atari Lynx. Let that just sink in for a minute. That should tell you enough right there. It's nice to see this game on the collection as it's interesting to see how far FPS games have come, but this one is sheer and utter crap. You walk around a massive dull looking area looking for enemies, using your weird map and radar. You can't strafe or anything, so if you're shooting at the enemies, you can be damn sure that they're shooting directly back at you. As well as shooting weird terminators, you've also got to blow up, I don't know, the pods. Make the mistake of using all your bombs like I did, and you'll just have to aimlessly walk around until you switch the game off. Again, it's good that it's on such a large collection for historical purposes, but it's, it's garbage. The highlight of Jimmy Connor's tennis is easily Jimmy Connor's mouth moving as he creepily welcomes you to the Welcome game. Welcome to the Bella Country Club. Hi, I'm Jimmy Connors. Hi, I'm Jimmy Connors. The low light is everything else. Granted, it looks pretty decent compared to most games on here, but it's the worst tennis game I've ever played in my life. And I've played Andre Agassi tennis on the Mega Drive. Your racket is absolutely tiny in comparison to the ball, and it shows as just hitting the ball from your own serve feels like a massive achievement. The ball travels at a blisteringly slow speed, but it's still near on impossible to figure out where you need to stand and get the timing right to make any contact with it. If you do, odds are it'll probably go out. If I'd had an Atari Lynx growing up, I'd have probably wanted a good tennis game for it, and I'd have been massively disappointed if I got this rubbish. In Gordo, you control a monkey with a cap and a camera. It's a platform game that's very zoomed in. The aim is to free animals from a lab and to get to the end of the level filled with weird lab technicians that kind of walk around like zombies. If you fall down a pit, you end up either in another lab or what appears to be hell. Everything is just a bit crappy. It feels like just a bad indie game. It makes little sense and it doesn't offer much. A really zoomed in platformer with so much above you to bang your head on as well just isn't ideal. This is not a fun game. By this point in my Evercade reviews I feel like I've made my feelings on this type of game very clear. This is pretty much the third iteration of this game on the Evercade. Previously the two entries were on the Oliver Twins collection and Indie Heroes 2. You move along a path the correct number of times to make the path disappear. You can walk off the end 2 in this one, making it a little bit more interesting I guess. Absolutely this game isn't for me. I just, I don't like this genre and I don't want to see it for a fourth time on the Evercade. Please no more of whatever the hell the name of this genre is. I'm going to go with walking number folly. No more walking number follies please. Clearly, this game would have sold itself on multiple games in one advertising. I imagine a lot of people felt cheated by that. The first game is probably the best a game and watch style arcade game where you need to catch children who are trying to jump to their death because they no longer want to live in a life of being called a freak or having an umbrella growing out of their heads. It's okay, it's, it's game and watch. As you move on to the next game, you begin to realise that the game has only one tune, and it's a really horrible rendition of New York, New York that grates your very soul. Break the Password is basically Hangman, but without the weirdly inappropriate Hanging Man for a children's game that no one ever questions for some reason. Link Sketch is basically just a rip-off of Etch Sketch. Hours of fun, right? Sound tool is about as self-explanatory as things get. It's a sound tool. Chopper X is an arcade game that's like Flappy Bird, but even less thrilling. And lastly, there's Pontiac, which is just a flickering picture of a car. In the 80s, people used to fool people into thinking they own this car by making them look at this image while wearing 80s 3D glasses and it would spring to life like some kind of incredibly realistic hologram. Some serious witchcraft right there.
We've all been there. We cycle to the office, get a flat tyre, and then the day gets worse when a rat dressed up as a human shoots us and steals our dog, following up with a letter that reminds you of exactly what just happened in case you don't remember. Tale as old as time. Certainly one of the better looking games on this collection, Scrapyard Dog is a platformer where you can jump and throw a can at stuff. The music's decent, but the game itself is a little on the clunky side. It's, it's a subpar platformer, if I'm being generous. Unfortunately, this is about as good as volleyball games get. There's a reason you've played little to no volleyball games, and the only volleyball you've watched was after a few beers late at night. It's because it's a dull sport heavily relying on sex appeal that makes for an even duller game. Sales for this one will have mostly been for the box art alone. The pace of this one is particularly slow, and accurately getting the ball is unnecessarily difficult. The highlight is watching the little boat go past in the background and wondering where your life went so wrong that you're still playing this game. Ishida is a pretty simple concept that becomes very complicated. You place tiles on an 8x12 grid that needs to either match the symbol or the colour next to it. There's a card game called Village Green which uses a similar concept to this, and I'm sure there's other ones as well. But, you know, Village Green's worth checking out. Initially, this is easy enough, but as the board begins to fill, you need to find cards that match all the cards surrounding it. You can just start putting cards down and see what happens, but to score big, some meticulous planning is necessary throughout. I can imagine some people really enjoying this one, but personally having to stare at these dull symbols in complete and utter silence isn't going to be particularly a fond memory. Even its vibrant colour scheme can't save this one from being incredibly boring. The board's just too big and it just goes on too long. By now, you should know if this game is for you or not. A puzzle game where you need to create loops using the Tetris-like pieces you're provided with. You can focus on one big loop or multiple loops. It's alright, it's not the worst puzzle game. I can't imagine anyone playing it for 5 to 10 hours like it states on the screen the most people do. It's a bit dull to look at with the brown on brown colour scheme, the music isn't really catchy but at least this has some, and at the end of the day you're just making loops. It's not the worst game but it's not good. This game was better than it initially looked. I thought it was going to be some Repton or Dig Dug clone, but it's more entertaining than those. Sorry Dig Dug fans, I'll never join you. You control a robot that can shoot its way through terrain. It feels a lot like an early iteration of SteamWorld Dig, except you've got a gun instead of a pickaxe. As you can imagine, it does get fairly repetitive and it doesn't look great, but it's alright. It's alright. This is an arcade basketball game that's mainly just so high on this list because of how amusing it is rather than how much fun it is. Think NBA Jam except instead of 2 on 2 it's 1 on 1. Fairly standard so far, however in this game you can pick up a knife and stab your opponent to get the ball off them. You can either just beat the crap out of them until you knock them unconscious and then just score multiple baskets until you wake them from a coma or you can just play normally. To add to the drama, what I'm going to assume are fellow gang members will occasionally just walk onto the court and start beating the crap out of the players. I quite like the crappy art style of this one, needs a bit of music though. Super Squeak is a fairly colourful arcade style maze shooter game. You need to move around the level changing all the blocks from blue to pink taking out various enemies and picking up power-ups along the way. The initial design of the level select screen is baffling, it took me about 10-15 minutes just to get started with this one. For some reason you can zoom in and out of the horrible map, but to select your destination you just have to hover over the island and press start. Thankfully, once I got into the game, 
things were a lot more straightforward and it was actually quite fun. It's definitely one of the more enjoyable games on the collection. Dracula is an atmospheric point and click adventure that takes no advantage whatsoever of the Atari Lynx's colour screen, opting for the classic shit stained colour scheme, brown brown brown. The level design for this one is pretty terrible, they blatantly drew rooms first and then decided how to interact with them second, as you'll have to go through a door that you can't actually see, they're not supposed to be hidden doors either, they're just standard doors into rooms. The game does well at feeling a bit creepy and atmospheric, complete with creepy storyteller sat down by the fire, but it's generally just a bit slow and difficult to see what's going on. Some sections where you need to scale the building in like a 2D platform way are incredibly dull and cumbersome and they just go on for too long. I'd imagine this would have been quite a good game to have on the Atari Lynx, but it just hasn't really aged very well. Awesome Golf is the name of the game, and is in no way a review of it. As it is, it's a pretty bog standard retro golf game, to be honest. It doesn't remotely look good, but the mechanics are decent enough. Unlike a lot of golf games, this one doesn't give you any indication of which club is best for the situation, leaving you to basically just find out through trial and error. This is good, as a lot of golf games tend to tell you how far each club will hit the ball, and just sort of hold your hand a bit too much, which takes away some of the gameplay. However, it's bad in that it means it's not really a pick up and play game, you need to really learn which club for which situation. You'll need to put a decent amount of time to this one to figure that out, and to be honest, you're probably not going to want to. A double pack of two average ports of games that came out a decade before the console is telling about the quality of this collection as a whole, being that this is the number one game on this. Super Asteroid looks arguably better than the original Asteroid, but there are far less Asteroids on screen, and you also get a health bar, making play sessions last way too long, and removing the constant threat of death, and that fun arcade style gameplay. It's classic, why, why change it? Missile Command, on the other hand, while decent, just doesn't remotely match the speed of the arcade version, and it's lacking flashy explosions too. If you want to play these games in your Evercade, I'd suggest opting for the better version of both on the Atari Arcade 1 collection. Still, it's the best game on this collection. Take with that what you will. Now I was really looking forward to playing this collection, but after playing it, it's been the dullest experience of my life so far since starting this YouTube channel. No one should have to play this collection other than people reviewing it, warning other people not to buy it. There's 17 games on it, and it's basically 17 games that if I ever do get an Atari Lynx, I'm not going to get any of those. For that reason, I'm going to score this terrible collection a 2.5 out of 10. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you think I've got this one wrong, let me know in the comments. Please like the video and don't forget to click subscribe for more reviews, rankings and hidden gems. I'll catch you next time.